this video is going to focus in on how we move the sliders on a triple beam balance, or a four beam balance in this case. They both would work the same way, a triple beam as well as a four beam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iPhone, I'm going to put it on the pan here, and you'll notice that this end right here is moving up. That means that I have to offset that weight by using these sliders. Now, the sli all of the sliders have to be at the right. So if any of the sliders is not all the way to the, not the right, the left, if any of the sliders are not all the way to the left, I cannot start because I won't be able to do it. It won't work properly, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But I always start with my largest weight, and this is the one that represents 100 grams at each notch. And I want you to listen carefully. Hopefully you can hear this on the video. You hear that clicking in? The slider has to be clicked in. Now I go to 100 and I see over here that I am still high. So I'm going to go to the 200 and see if that takes it down. And it does. It goes down below the center line which is right here. You see the zero? right there okay now let's go back then and we'll put it on the hundreds now with all the other sliders what we want to do if there's not enough weight we need to go to the next slider we're going to move it halfway across it'll speed up our weighing process so let's see if that's too much weight oh not enough so now let's go one more oh it's not gone down yet ah that one took it down where I moved it to was 70. So I'm going to take it back to the 60. All right. Now, I've done all I can on my second slider. I'm going to go to my third slider. This registers hundreds, or I'm sorry, ones, one gram for each notch. So I'm going to move this right to the center, over to five, click it in place, and let's see what happens. Oh, goes down. So that means I need to take weight off, and I do that by going to 4. 4 is less weight than 5. It doesn't take it back up. 3 is less. 2 is less. 1 is less. Ah, there we go. It goes up. And now I'm ready because 2 was too much. Now I move it back so that we have 1. And we know it's between 1 and 2. And the way we find out how far it is between 1 and 2 is to use the smallest slider, which registers 1 1,000th one of a gram. But the numbers that are printed are going in tenths of a gram. So I'm going to take this slider, move it to the middle. That's the fastest thing to do. We'll see if it's too much weight. It is. So I have to move back. And I'll go back 1 1 tenth of a gram. And that took it up. Now I know it's between 4, 0.4 and 0.5. So then I'm going to take it over and see if maybe halfway between is going to work. Uh huh. It's still not enough weight because the the end there is not matching up quite right. Let's go back. I'm going to look at it from the other side so I can tell exactly where that thing is. And it's still a little high, which means if this is high. I need more weight. If it's below, I need less less weight. So let's move it just a hair more, hair more. Excuse the hiccups, and let's see if we can make this work. Are we down now? Right level? Yeah, we're pretty good. I would I would say it's probably just a few hundredths of a gram more. And that's my estimate. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, it's settling in there. Looks like it's right on. Okay, now I can read my scale. So let's move up a little closer so we can actually see the numbers better. And we'll take a reading on this scale and we'll record it really quickly here. Okay, now we've adjusted uh, a little bit closer in so you can actually see what's going on. I'll be honest with you, I moved the 10 slider, and that's uh, this guy right here. Okay, I moved that so that we could see the hundreds. Generally, when you're using the scale in person, you don't have a problem with camera angles. So just to get a good reading so you can see everything that's going on, I moved that. 
And let's move it, or having moved it, let's read what that would actually be. I see that I have 100, I have 10, I have 10 sevenths, I have one of the hundreds, I have seven of the tens, that's where the 70 comes from, and I have one of the ones. So what I was doing is I was reading first this, this guy, then I'm reading this guy right here, and then I'm reading this guy right here. So that's a hundred, seventy, one. And let's put that on a recording chart now and see how that would actually look. We have one in the hundreds, one in the seventies, and we have one in the ones. Okay, so 70 would be seven tens, and one would be one once. And the one in the hundreds column gives us a one with two zeros. The in the tens column, the seven gives us a seven and one zero, and in the ones column, we have just the plain old one. Now, look at this. That's the largest slider. That's the second largest slider. That's the third largest slider. Now, look at this. The smallest slider is going to give us our next three numbers. So let's go back and look at that and see what that's going to be. As I look at where that slider is, I see it's past the four, or the point four that is, and it's not quite to the point five. So when I look at where that thing actually is, it is just at least to my eyes, a hair to the left of center. As you see it on the video, let's go with that. And as I look at it on the video, I would say that that's more like a little teeny bit to the right of center. So here's how we read it. Our one one tenth is going to be the four. So that's in the in the tenths column. Mm, come on, go. Here we go. So we're at four one tenths, and now we're going to go to the hundredths column, and the hundredths column is going to be what you see as the second decimal. And for that one, what we're going to do is we're going to read the little lines, and you can see we have point four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's past the eight, but it's not to the nine. So, my next number is going to be an 8. And that's in the 1 one hundredths column. Now, the last number we have to get is the 1 one thousandths. And the 1 one thousandth is going to be how far between the, the 8 and the 9 is it? It's actually 0 .008 and 0 .009. That's what those two lines represent. So I have to imagine 10 lines that really aren't there. And so I'm going to estimate, as I look at this on the video, it's really looking like halfway between. So I would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for my 1, 1 hundredths. And so we just go over here, and in the 1, 1 thousandths, I'm sorry, in the 1, 1 thousandths column, we have a 5. So what's our total? We have... 171.485. And that's how it's done. I hope you've gotten a little bit out of this. And thank you for watching.